Guys, this YouTube channel is not to get your pronouns right. If you're offended by my message, you're using the wrong fact checker. I'm not a rainbow farting unicorn. I'm nature's advocate. Good morning, good morning. Are you all still sleeping? There's nobody on the beach. How can you fish if you're not here on the beach? Look at this unique, beautiful, amazing sunrise we have here at Lucia Ishri. Isimangalisa Wetland Park, South Africa. This is Ingwe Beach. Let's just familiarize ourselves on where Ingwe Beach is. That is the first 21 kilometers of the estuary, with St. Lucia Town being on the left hand side of the screen. You take the beach road from Chopra Checkers, the circle, and you come down to the St. Lucia beaches. You find Ingwe parking. Now, this is where we get onto the beach at the moment, either by foot or for the boats launching. It's got a beautiful gully, but by the time you get here, the weather conditions will be changed. There's a, a moderately strong southeasterly wind picking up. At least I got to see the sunrise. Sorry, you guys missed it. It was a wish you were here moment. Right, let's get back to business walking the beaches to revive the estuary. What the Isimangalisa Wetland Park Authority is failing us is they're not doing research at the moment on the most important thing that has got impact on the Lake St. Lucia World Heritage Site health and that is sediment. The beach has not only grown in distance here at Ingwe Beach but also in height and some places I guess as much as 1.3 meters and that is not recorded so the sediment impact the Mfalosi River has got is going to be lost for generations because the scientists chose to take it out of the equation in the 2012 management plan Global Environmental Fund didn't take it into consideration when they built the man-made sand dune. Look at this beautiful gully here at the boardwalk entrance. And if you look a little bit to the right, you see that's about 1.3 meters above the high water mark. Now you're going to tell me but it's the high water that cut that. Yeah, I know. But there was a strong storm shear surge on the ocean last night that probably influenced the high water with about a one and a half to two meters. So that is why it was able to cut us. An example of how much the beach has risen in height here at St. Lucia Estuary, Isimangalisa Wetland Park and there's nobody recording the sediment build up along our beaches anyway this is a beautiful gully for fishing it's deep you can see it's deep just by the color changes and it's got white water to the left it's got everything that the fishermen want ticks all the boxes for a beautiful fishing gully and there's nobody here, nobody fishing. Gave geese and the sci-fi. See this is why I say 1.3 meters at least. Some places even more.
absolutely absolutely a beautiful unique sunrise with another gully here to the south of Ishri Beach and yet nobody is fishing just look at this amazing sunrise look at the birds frolicking here in this gully uh, guys you don't want to fish it's not so much that the, this very little of the resident species available to target but the pelagics are frolicking here at Fisher Estuary Beaches Isibangalisa Wetland Park, South Africa the pelagics are frolicking they swarming together and you're not here to catch it want to take a moment let's recap on how much sediment buildup there is at the St. Lucia estuary beaches so people can see what I'm talking about and this is not coastal sediment movement I'll show you now but let's just have a look nature is patiently waiting for us to fix the problem there is still deep enough holes here at the beach channel that hippos can frolic completely have a look at this for hippo to porpoise like that there has to be a lot of water depth is an issue look at the big hippos floating there in the water Nature is screaming for our help. Yes, we know that the Amphilosi floodplains has been formed since the early 1930s. But that was done by a scientific decision to improve the quality of human life on the planet. We kind of brush it aside and just ignore it. This is why Natal Parksport was better at the job. They were acting as custodians and as facilitators. But the New Park Authority, the World Heritage Site, they don't act the same way. They started with town planning. Andrew Zulumis is a qualified town planner from Wits University. And the new management team just wants to continue. They want to build hotels. They're just looking at where is their salary coming from? How are they going to survive? The Tel Parksport was much more innovative and spending the money that the government allocated the to them the beach driving permits was funding okay, the health of the St. Lucia history it's above the normal high water mark and it's on top of the sand here at Ingwe beach people tell me ask me how do we clean the estuary from this suffocating mud we just open the mouth and um, after that, what the ocean didn't remove, we'll have to work on. I find it difficult to believe that the young scientists, now uh, that's just the scientists between 23 and 33, and some of them adults leading these youngsters, that they disregard the historical knowledge that was built up by the Portuguese mariners, the Royal Society of South Africa, and the Natal Park Sport. Guys, you haven't reinvented the wheel yet. You have to believe in historical knowledge. Science is based on historical knowledge. If it wasn't for, for Albert Einstein, you guys wouldn't have work. So stop regressing science back into the old ages because you tear those pages out of the books historical knowledge is absolutely absolutely vital and important for the existence of science so stop debunking it stop shaming it and if 
if you don't believe in the future of your children and it's your responsibility to manage their heritage, you're in the wrong job.